Ahoy and welcome to this narrow boat adventure. Today we are going to be doing our book club. We're doing favourite boating recipes, traditional cabin fare, and we're going to turn to page 44. We're doing Navi stew. It, this dish is a tribute to the Navis who dug out the canals in the 18th and 19th century and they worked in quite harsh and dangerous conditions. So we got the Navis. Um, so I have changed this recipe slightly. I'm using a little bit less meat because it calls for an awful lot of meat. Frankly, if I'd have gotten 900 grams of lamb neck, it wouldn't have fitted in my um, my, my dish. Um, and also, that's far more meat than really is necessary. I think this is about five people's worth of meat as it is. And I think the reason there's a lot of meat in the recipe is because there's not very much else. So I'm gonna have a bit less meat and instead of that, I'm gonna put in some dumplings and I'm gonna make some vegetables for the side. Um, but everything else is basically gonna be the same. Okay, come on, let's cook. So these are the ingredients that we're going to be using today from fa favourite boating recipes, traditional cabin fare. So it says seasoned flour in the recipe, and I wasn't quite sure what seasoned flour is. Um, after some research, I found out that it's simply flour with salt and pepper and whichever seasonings you like in. So I added some smoked paprika, because that's my favourite seasoning at the moment. So then we roll the meat in the seasoned flour. You'll notice that I'm making sure to get it into all the nooks and the crannies of the meat. So what we're going to do after this is sear the meat and this just keeps all the flavours inside. I think I ended up double coating it in flour because in the time it took me to start the uh, frying process, the meat had sort of sucked up all of the flour so I did double coat the flour Then I used two spoons of olive oil and I seared the meat in a nice hot pan. So I've done my best to save on the washing up here. So I've piled the meat back up on the flour plate and then uh, I'm popping it back into the, the pot. This did end up being a relatively low washing up recipe. So once you've seared off the meat, I am adding the carrots and the onions into the same pot to use those lovely meaty juices to brown off the vegetables. Once you've browned off the vegetables, you add the meat back in. Then I'm gonna add in the parsley and the thyme. I couldn't get fresh thyme this time, so I'm using dried. And I'm adding a spoonful of mustard. The last of the flour that we had used to coat our, <laughs> our meat, that was me getting frightened by a friend coming to visit. Uh, I'll leave that as a blooper at the end for anyone who'd like to hear the blood curdling scream that came out of me at that moment in time. Then I'm going to add the stock. So I've used a lamb stock to really bring the flavours out of the lamb. 
then we're going to add the Guinness. So I got the original recipe Guinness because I wanted to use something as close as possible to what Guinness would have tasted like in the 16th to 18th century. But of course then I had to use my phone to look up how much of a bottle is half a pint. And obviously that sort of defeats, defeats the point of being uh, traditional. And I think I actually put in more beer than I had really meant to. Um, but it didn't seem to spoil the uh, recipe. And then of course we season it again and give it a nice stir. Now we wait uh, for about an hour and a half. And then I made up some dumplings and added them. I know you can make dumplings uh, from suet, but we don't make dumplings very often, so it, I didn't want to waste a whole packet of suet. Although I must admit this recipe was so good that we have made it again since. And as I'm a bit of a renegade in cooking, I thought I'd also add some BF to soak up the last bits to see if that made any difference to the flavour of the dumplings. It did a little, but they still were lovely. Just tasted a little bit more of Guinness. And then of course breaking them up into eight small dumplings. popping them inside our lovely stew, which at this point was smelling fantastic. It's a very rich stew when it comes out. Then we waited another half an hour and in that time I decided to cook uh, one of my favourite vegetable side dishes with a couple of amendments. So this sort of started out with Jamie Oliver's Brussels with Hustle recipe, only he adds bacon and he doesn't add a leek. So I've done a whole leek, a bunch of Brussels sprouts all cut up, fried with some butter and some Worcestershire sauce and a bit of salt. And I didn't really know that I liked Brussels sprouts until I had this recipe of sprouts and I was very pleased by it. And now I love sprouts, so highly recommend this recipe. I realised Worcestershire sauce was so good in cooking until this time either. Then when everything's ready, we can start plating up. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed cooking along with me. Um, the thing that was nice about this recipe actually was that a lot of it is very much like by eye. So I imagine if I cook it again, I'll change the ingredients around a little bit and things like that. And also uh, it was delicious. And I'm gonna put a clip of us eating it here. Very good, very nice dumplings. Very tender lamb. Yummy! Yeah, it's really good. Mm, I agree wholeheartedly. This is a recipe I will make again. If you want to, there's 46 pages in this book, so if you comment a number on this video, then whichever number is the most popular will be the next one that I um, cook. Kind of like the lottery, but not quite as exciting. Um, so yes, please do let me know what you thought, if you're gonna cook it at home, and uh, yeah, whatever number you think between one and four thirty six. Obviously the ones I've already done are not going to get counted so that's up to you to remember what ones I've already done. Uh, thank you so much for watching, have a lovely day and I do hope to see you soon. If you'd like to join us again on this narrowboat adventure you can click subscribe down below. You can also jump over onto Facebook and search this narrowboat adventure where I also post the videos and also happy new year! Bye! Flower! Okay. <laughs>